Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life. This time talking a little bit about whole house audio. This is a topic that I get, you know, via comments and emails on a pretty regular basis. I covered it recently actually in the, the most recent two Q&As uh, with a viewer who was having an interesting challenge uh, with a new home that he had just moved into and uh, we solved it. So there's a number of ways to do this and this whole video kind of came about, it's a little bit longer than my original intent, um, which was just to cover the interesting smart home kind of audio, whole house audio, uh, if you consider an entire house house with uh, less than 390 square feet here in the tiny home. Uh, I was just going to cover that, but I thought let's make something that's a little bit more robust and kind of cover the various systems. So let's start off with the option one of three for the hardware and the speakers. And this is kind of covering the old fashioned way of doing it. This is hardwired You've got speaker cable running through your home, so there's no compromise in terms of wireless interference or signal problems. And back in the day, this was practically the only way to do it. You might think also it conjures up images of the lifestyles of the rich and famous. And uh, these were speaker systems that they're still installed these days. Um, and some people uh, outside of you know the lifestyles of the rich and famous might still, you could still put it into your own home if you wanna uh, invest the time and money into the speakers, whether they are actually just speakers in every room or they're in walls or in ceiling and you actually have them uh, all wired back to kind of a matrix device or a switcher that'll enable the um, various audio or the speaker groups to be created and you could send audio audio signals from CD players, you know, kind of jukeboxes, uh, radio stations, streaming, all different kinds of things, and it can kind of mix and match those and send those throughout your home. Okay, so option two, I think most people are gonna be familiar with this name, so just say it with me, Sonos. That's right, Sonos has evolved to be kind of this middle ground between option one and the next one that I'll talk about, which are smart speakers. Sonos has been around for over 10 years, but I think more people have kind of, it's come into the public consciousness over the past maybe five to 10 years. Sonos makes wireless speakers that are no compromise. So these are wireless, they run on Wi-Fi. If you have ethernet uh, networking in, in your home and it's in every room, you can plug them in directly, but otherwise they have gotten this down. No compromise means the streaming is excellent and the sound, the music, whatever you're playing is gonna be the same in every, uh, in every room, say that you have it playing across all the different speakers. From room to room, you're not gonna hear any delay or echo or any of those weird issues that you might hear with other systems. Now, it is a little bit more expensive than maybe your run-of-the-mill smart speaker of today, but uh, the lower end options, starting with their Play One, only starting at about, at about $150, and it goes up from there depending on the speaker size and quality. They also have some accessories that can upgrade your existing receiver um, that doesn't have any kind of smarts or Wi-Fi. They've just introduced two models this year, the Sonos One and the brand new soundbar, the Beam, and these actually have microphones on board, so they actually directly support Lady A, good old Alexa from Amazon, right on board. So Sonos, a really good option. It's kind of like the Swiss army knife of wireless speakers. The third option for whole house audio in terms of speakers, well, it's smart speakers. And I'm gonna kind of gloss over and skip over the Apple HomePod. It's the newest one but it's completely proprietary to the Apple ecosystem. It starts at $350, and most likely, if you already want one, you probably already have one. In terms of Bluetooth, there are a ton of Bluetooth speakers out there, some good, some not so good. I think we all know that Bluetooth audio streaming it cuts out, there's interference, it can be not the greatest thing. We've got new Bluetooth standards that have been approved and are coming out but are not quite hitting all those speakers yet, which would improve their quality. And to send audio through the Bluetooth connection, there is a certain amount of compression that has to be done. So I'm gonna kind of gloss over those, but if you do have Bluetooth speakers, I do have an option coming up that you, uh, a little bit later in the video, that you can make them to be whole house audio speakers. Of course, the two names that we all think of when we do think of smart speakers come from, of course, Amazon and Google with the Echo line and all the third-party variants and then the home line of speakers from Google and their third-party variants that are coming to market as well. These obviously give you the smart assistance and whichever camp that you fall into, you probably have a preference for either Lady A, Alexa, or the OK Google. 
um, so I don't set off your devices and I don't have to throw up a disclaimer. The assistants are great or they're great at certain things. And then over the past year, uh, due to a lot of requests, both companies have enabled the speakers to become whole house audio systems. And this is all done through the app, through either the Alexa app or the Google Home app. And you can simply set these up. Again, you need to have at least two. Um, you can set them up in pairs, in threes, or all over the entire home. When the Google um, Home Mini came out, as the Google Home speakers are my particular platform preference, at least at the moment, when the minis came out, I said, that's it. I'm getting them for the rest of the house, the tiny little home here. And so I've got two minis and the one Google Home uh, that's sitting right over there in the kitchen. and. I've been able to link them up, obviously, through the app and do whole house music. And I thought, wow, what have, have I been missing? And so these speakers are usually the affordable alternatives starting at $50 for either the Echo Dot or for the Google Home Mini. Uh, or if they're on special somehow, you can get them for $30 or $35. So it makes whole house audio kind of accessible to way more people. And then if you do want something a little bit more high end, the uh, newer Echo uh, speakers that were introduced last fall have some more robustness and better audio quality. There is the Google Home Max, which is a massive speaker and can kind of compete with the aforementioned options from Sonos. But now comes the question. So if you use music streaming services, Spotify, Pandora, all the different ones, and there's, there's one from like every company nowadays, it seems. Those are great when you're dealing with something like Sonos, when you're dealing with something like a voice-enabled smart speaker or a voice-enabled anything, because you just ask for it and it's done. You get kind of newer music or your playlist, what have you. But here's the question of if you have local music, if you're maybe old-fashioned, you have your own playlist, you have your own maybe media server, how do you deal with that? So here are two options if you want to kind of keep everything local within your home, or I guess it would be smart home if you're watching this channel. So option one is Plex. This is a media server that, again, if I'm if you know the name of it, I'm probably already preaching to the choir. The Plex media server has been around for a long while and is free. It runs on Windows, Macs, Linux, practically every platform that's out there, including NAS storage arrays. So you can have just a ton of content, not just audio, but of course, video content, TVs and movies and all kinds of things and have those play out to a zillion, a plethora of devices. It is also compatible with various smart home systems and hubs such as SmartThings and Wink and Home Assistant, which is the open source one uh, that runs on various, um, that software runs on various um, machines and Raspberry Pis and so forth. And so that gives you even more flexibility. I'm not going to go super in depth into details on how to use and install Plex, but it is definitely a good option. So here's the second option, and it happens to be the one that I use. So if you don't have a media server or you don't want to run any kind of media server, say perhaps you already have your own music library that's on your machine running on a Mac or a Windows machine, um, whatever your favorite app might be, and you just want to get sound out of that machine and use that as kind of your source and get that audio, get that music out to smart speakers, Sonos, what have you, and utilize everything, everything that you already have set up on that. Well, that is what I'm using, and I'm using it with an app called Airfoil. This is from a company that generally makes only Mac-based audio software, but this particular app runs on both Mac and Windows. It's kind of the Swiss Army knife, I may have already overused that term, of getting audio out and routing it to these various speakers. And it covers Bluetooth speakers, so that opens up the entire Echo range. It covers Sonos, it covers AirPlay, so there, there you go with Apple TV, it covers Google Home, it covers Chromecast, all cast-enabled devices as well, uh, which is smart TVs, and if you have devices such as smartphones, tablets, other PCs and Macs, Linux installations, they have a little satellite app that will let you broadcast audio to those devices as well. And for your smartphone, I believe this works also because I haven't tried the app on another machine because I only have one Mac here. Uh, it'll also let you have control of that machine and how it's sending that audio out. So you get a little control panel. Airfoil lets you select the 
app that the audio is coming from or it can be the system audio itself and then you can have speaker groups these can be grouped among different types of speakers this could be a combination of echo devices and google homes or vice versa um, or you can individually select those speakers to be broadcast as well. On the Mac, you can script it with Apple Script, and that's kind of, again, where this whole video came from, which was how I ran into this app. I knew of the app by name, but I had never really used it or purchased it. Until about six months ago, I had challenged myself. I was running, I was throwing a holiday party, and I used to kind of be known in certain small circles for doing interesting synchronized AV light shows uh, at parties years ago, I thought, all right, I want to challenge myself to do this light show thing, but all of it really needs to be done by voice. I don't want to sit here and have to, in, you know, start it. I don't want to have to use a specific app. I really wanted to challenge myself. So that included audio output. It included routing and volume control and all those things. So that is where all this came from. And I was successful at it. And so I used all of the scripts that I built to run parts of the show, part, parts of the audio and control iTunes. I used that to then integrate it over the coming weeks and months into the rest of the smart home here. Google Home speakers across the tiny little home here get audio fed from the Mac wirelessly through airfoil and that covers home mode versus away mode it covers the smart home kind of the automation alarm clock which now sends that repeating time indication in the mornings the to the bedroom speaker directly instead of the mac playing it all kinds of stuff so i can use commands like this okay google turn on speakers and resume audio and that will kick off a number of okay, different actions, including connecting up, Resuming setting up. the volume, having iTunes resume. I've got next and back. I've got randomize. I've got playlist selection from iTunes. So a whole bunch of things. I don't want to go into it in ridiculous detail. Um, if you're curious about the scripting and how I'm accomplishing some of this, leave me a comment, send me an email, and I'll make those available to you so you can take a look a, a little bit uh, more in depth. But this is my solution. Certainly by no means uh, any of these solutions are the only ways to do it, but uh, this particular one definitely works for me and some of the other ones that I've talked about in terms of speakers, maybe the Plex Media server um, could work for you as well. So most of you are probably going to be using something like the Echo line, the Google Home line, maybe the Sonos if you want to spend a little bit more money for, for really good audio quality. I don't want to say they're audio file level audio quality, but they are really excellent and there's a raving fan base of customers who love Sonos. If you've got questions, I've got answers. You can reach me, of course, at smarterhomehelp.com. That's that quick link to the form. I'm here for your smart home consultations. And otherwise, I'm Joe Deganzik. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.